You know when you play video games, sometimes you can be like <laughs> the 86 Celtics versus the 01 Sixers? Yeah. Like, do you ever do that with partying? Oh, yeah. Could I go Hendrick against, Joplin Kreischer? Can I go against the the Lizard King? I'll take uh, 91 Downey Jr. Ooh! Okay. Versus 44 Ooh. Hitler. Ooh. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a lot of drugs, and that's women wow. pooping on glass. <laughs> with me today are, uh, we got Cypher Sounds, we got Dan Soder. We've got... I got your fucking nose candy. <laughs> Wait, are we all Sharon Afrin? Yeah. Tammy Cypher, come sit down before we are, we come and sit down. Okay. Grab a do we have, Can you guys share a mic? Yeah, yeah, we can share a mic. Oh um, yeah. you guys should June Carter what? Johnny Cash station. Oh well, I got I it. I feel for like you. I should. Oh take a whack, dude. I got it. Have yourself a whack. How did you get it off? Jackson. Kiss it. Kiss it. That's two. Oh, here we go. Do you take two pumps? Two zips, quick. Are you using the same <laughs> nose spray? Yeah, it's, don't it's cool. up like that. We you do don't have cooking. to. You know? Ooh. Yeah, man, just zip it up there. And let it do what it does. Membrane. You're oh. You're taking it down to your asshole. Oh, my God. That Welcome does. to over 40 and partying. <laughs> <laughs> do you like you Afrin? Nice with it? Do you like open holes in your face? I just slept three hours, hard as fuck. Dude, did you touch the bottom of the pool? Were you at the bottom of the pool the whole time? Uh-uh, I had a dream... I had a dream. Oh, fuck. I had a dream. The little... Shit, shit. I had a dream. There was a joke in the dream, and I was going to tell you the dream. I woke up to tell you the dream. It, I, it has dream to be about. a joke? What are you, Paul McCartney? <laughs> and I dream it. jokes all the time. Keith Richards really? does Yeah, that. but they're always yeah. based on what I'm listening to. And this dream was, it had to be about the Powder Keg Rebellion or William Wallace or King James. This is what you listen to when this you This is what you, dr- or, or you no, dream no, no, no. about? Susan B. Anthony. It was about Susan B. Anthony. <laughs> it was about Susan B. Anthony. And it was a trans person. Stop. And I, in the dream, and I go, hey, buddy, looks like Susan B. Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> in the dream, and I woke up. I was like, I got to write that down. And I was like, it's not that great. No, that's it's a Galifianakis dream. joke. What? Galifianakis did that old joke where he was like, I want to open a... A uh, store for cross dressers and call it Susan B. Anthony. Oh, that's it. that's a good joke. There you go. Oh. Between two ferns. If I the other Were you listening joke, to that when you went to sleep? No, no, no. I was, I was listening. <laughs> do, you, to a do you go to bed to Galifianakis like I do? <laughs> no, I was listening to a, a documentary on uh, Susan B. Anthony about the uh, suffrage suffragettes, mm-hmm. and then about the dollar that didn't work. Yeah, and then and then the other one, I, the other joke I wrote the other day was, uh, I didn't know that the. You know the song Nights in White Sat and Moody Blues, dude. Yeah, I thought it was K N I G H T. Like not, like yeah, it was about right. the, it was about the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> this you thought it was about. Yeah, why didn't never, <laughs> you thought it was a soft song about the Klan? A, a, a Moody Blues. <laughs> Moody and, Blues goes, You know who's no one ever's written a song about? The Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> I think That's we can do it. Though. Yeah. Like, in in, in white sat. That's pretty Yacht great rock. hate rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yacht rock. Leanne laughed so hard when I told her she was like, "Hold on, you thought it what you? It's a love song, and I thought it's not the K N I G H T of in my son." <laughs> and then the, that night, I had a dream that I was with another guy, and we walked up to we were in the woods, and we walked up to a cross burning, and I said to him, "They got in the him dream, oh, no, I'm sorry. Your <laughs> dreams are racist. <laughs> You're a racist while you sleep." In my dream, I had a dream. Where white kids can I, hold hands with white kids and not be bothered. <laughs> In the dream, I looked at the guy I was with who brought me there and said, I thought you said clam rally. <laughs> I swear to God. I swear to God. You dream like Bazooka Joe bubble gum stuff. I, I have fucked up dreams. I, Do I you dream remember them? I remember all of them. You remember them like, my memories of my dreams fade as the day goes on. Do yours stay? Like, do you... Keep remembering them. So, yeah, and but I can I can I can walk you through them because if I re-listen to the podcast, I'll tell you the dream I had. So I, I, in the dream, one of the dreams I had tonight, they were the punishment was they hung you and then they quartered you, and and I was dreaming about quartering someone. Yeah, and the idea wow. that you would show them their arm and because they'd leave the head on so yeah. that you lived, so you cool. show someone their arm. After a and horse the, ripped it off, yeah, right? and you'd be like, "That's you're never gonna have." You that can again. just fire me. You know who I'd be? <laughs> you the, you know who I'd be quarter, the quartering guy? Quarter me. I would be the guy that was apologizing as he 
tied the rope to your arm where I go, <laughs> honestly, I don't want to do this to you, but this guy does, you know? And just, <laughs> like, I'm the horse guy where I'm like, all right, he'll just go when he wants grade. to go. <laughs> oh. Hey, buddy, are you going to pull that and, arm? And he goes, we're going to rip this guy apart? And you go, when Buttercup is ready. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine having a non- a non uh, a horse that just didn't want to work with you. Oh yeah, you go. <laughs> then he goes. He's not. We're gonna quarter this guy. Come on, September rains. <laughs> yeah. Come on, September rains. <laughs> Juilliard, Juilliard, here. And then you lean into the guy getting tied and go. So horses can read your energy, and apparently you're giving <laughs> off some fucked up energy right now. I need you to relax to get quartered. Ever ridden a horse, Saifa? Yeah. What do you mean? Where? Why, why? Why me? No, you. I grew, there's not a lot of Puerto Rican cowboys. No, 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 no. Yes. Horse riding in Puerto Rico is very big. I rode oh. horses in the ocean in Puerto Rico. No, no, I'm not that Puerto Rican. I'm no. New York. No, you never. I don't to, fuck with that Puerto Rican. Have you ever been to Puerto Rico? <laughs> yeah, of course, but not like that. That. Like, yeah. what do you do in Puerto Rico? Just parents took me as young to appreciate go, New I York. Go, Just go to the club. No, but when I go to Puerto Rico, it's the same vacation that white people go to. Really? I'm not going to I'm not going to Catalina to visit my great aunt. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. You don't go so when they're at the resort, like do the people at the resort be like, what are you doing? Yeah, like, well, you're I'm on the pool side. <laughs> we got yeah. a runner. Yeah. Yeah. You don't visit your cousins and play barefoot baseball <laughs> in a dirt park. Yo, listen, if you go to DR or Puerto Rico, just bring like old Yankee hats. Yeah. And give them to like the guys who work in the hotel and you'll get Whatever you want. Really? Yes. They don't have to be brand new. Just like a, you know, not a beat Do you up have one. to lie about who they came from? I got a bunch <laughs> of Cleveland Indians hats that I can't wear anymore, so we'll just give those out. No, it's cool. You can go to the reservations and hand those out. They're pretty pumped about it. <laughs> just give them cigarettes and cheaper gas. Yeah. It's like this losing Super no, Bowl teams. Super, yeah. It's like no, Nazi memorabilia yeah. now. <laughs> they're super stoked. They're super stoked about those hats. You should take it to them. Do you know how many well, people I know that have the Chief Wahoo tattoo? That are oh, yeah. stuck in DC, their calves. Like the go, yeah. The ghost well, that's skins. the name of the Indian? <laughs> like on the license it's plates? Chief Wahoo. And in Cleveland, that would be the thing. You graduate from high school and you get a Chief Wahoo tattoo on your calf or like your hip or your arm. And now they're all screwed. Was there lots of Indian complaining? Yeah, Native there was. American there was from them. Yeah. But apparently. One guy who was really loud. Apparently. Uh, I don't know how I know this. Was it Branscombe Richmond? The guy who gave Renegade his duties on the show Renegade with Lorenzo Lamas. <laughs> I, love, I love your knowledge. Well, Pat Oswalt references old authors and you yeah. represent you, 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 oh my god. He's Action like the TV. stone Dennis Miller. Yeah. <laughs> you guys don't remember Branscombe Richmond from TV's Renegade. You're the stone Dennis Miller. The That's Indian guy it's funny to his... think of Jay being like Dennis Miller being like, I don't want to get off on a rant here, <laughs> but that pussy was what her... That pussy... <laughs> that pussy was better than, better than, better than, than, than v... uh, Pamela Anderson on VIP. And you're like, no one remembers <laughs> that show. I don't remember man. VIP. Yeah. Do you remember Acapulco Ma Heat? Molly Culver. To... Molly Culver, was that her name? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Oh, Molly Culver. Dark hair? Yeah, no, he she was, was great. That gorgeous. was jerk off action. She was fucking gorgeous. Yeah. Hot. Hot. Shout out the '90s for giving us jerk jerk off material mixed with low budget action. Yeah, in prime time. I had porn by that point, gang. All right. So you know what? Molly Cul Culver? I know who she is. She was on uh, Pam Anderson was my jam back in the day. No, no she was on Molly Culver was on uh, VIP. No, she was also on Never Mind the Buzzcocks. Was she? Yeah, she's on my episode. Oh shit! And I thought I was gonna hook up with her. She was like, we should hang out in, in L.A. What do you like to do? And I said, I don't know. I said, I, I ride. And I was going to say. You said Tiffany. Did also that. Tiffany. Also Tiffany. Also it was just raining. I did, two episodes. On you I did two episodes. I did two wow. episodes. And then, and I said, I ride. I was going to say, I ride. I like to ride spin bikes. Yeah. She goes, I ride. And I went, oh, for real? She goes, yeah, let's get, let's go to the track and race. And I went, huh? And then she's like, yeah, let me see. Let me see. Uh. I'll show you a picture of my bike or something. And I was like, oh, I don't I don't have a bike. And then she was a motorcycle rider. And she was like, badass. Really? She was badass. And I was like, I oh. thought, I swear to God, I'm so misogynist. I thought you were going to say, she's bad at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get the thing started. I swear to God, he's like, badass. I was like, oh, she did good. Okay. Wait, oh. Jay, what's the, okay, you TV show real quick. Can I? Yeah. Remember there was a TV show with two guys that were aliens and they came to I Earth. Know. No, <laughs> they, I can't find the show anyway. There were two aliens, and it was like TV porn almost. It was always around hot chicks. They were like kind of goofy. Are you like, talking about a movie or a no? TV it was a TV show. show. It was a weekly show. I thought he was going to talk about Earth Girls Are Easy. No, that was a that that's, a movie. that's a movie. It's similar to that. Yeah, that's what. But it, there were these two guys, and they came out. It was a TV show. One of my show. favorite things in the world to do, Bert, Perfect. is you know figure remember? out this is a good game. Falcon, what yeah. he's talking about because it's a real thing. You're yeah, not making so this up. I can't. You're not I out Google of your it. Fucking, 
I can't find it, but it was two aliens, and they were like trying to do something. No, the only but, alien one I remember and watched was uh, the one with what's her name? What's the girl that they raped in Saturday Night Fever? She was the mom. Oh, uh, oh, in the when they touched the triangle, Amy something, and the triangle. Mm -hmm. You could be. That was her father. Her father her was father an was, alien. No, not that. I know that. Oh, that's um. Out of, Out of this world. Out of this world. It was Elf. You were watching Elf. She would snap and would freeze. Freeze time. She could freeze time. Because oh, she's part no. alien. What? It was two horny aliens. Yeah. And Jeez. it was like, okay, if you're from New York, it was like on Channel 9. Before, like, we had cable and all that okay, stuff. Okay, so UHF. It was... <laughs> Two UHF, million. that was uh, yeah. that was that was 44 for us. Yeah. yeah well, you, well, UHF was three channels always. We had it was what would become UPN. Yeah. CW um, and uh, yeah, and Fox no. yeah. were UHF Ooh, and alien. NBC, UHF. ABC, and CBS were like the top numbers. That yeah. was like three, six, and ten in Philly. Ours were uh, was those three, and then the UHF was you had to go to the U on the top yeah, thing yeah, and then yeah, turn yeah, to. Yeah. Well, were the aliens men or women? They were both men. They were like Sorry. horny Paulie Shore kind of guys. Like, no, I love it. Oh man, no one knows this. And show. Would they? Am I high? Yeah, would they you get were high. women? Huh? Would they they bang? There's always been like a girls? lot of cleavage on the show, a lot of titty meat. What years are we talking? This is like ninety. Oh man, this should oh, I should man. know this. Ninety two yeah. to ninety six. I should five. absolutely. We know. That's when I was Three's in college. No. This was when I was a, I was a boy at home with nothing but a television. You yeah. know, you were in college for a decade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was in college, college, college these years. <laughs> the nineties are lost years for me. Yeah, you had both Clinton administrations <laughs> I, while yeah. you were in college. Yeah, yeah Checking we did. in here yeah. was And like I had a G-Dub in there, I think. Really? A little bit I of G-Dub? I think, yeah, I think, no, I had Reagan. Was Reagan then Clinton? We, yeah, Wait, no, no, Reagan, no, George H.W. Bush. 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 I started with George H.W. Yeah, Bush. <laughs> got you had Bush Reagan, original recipe. Again. You had you Bush original recipe. Bush? And then... No, no, no. Oh, I wish. Oh. What is this alien show? Do you it remember like anybody who was on it? checking into the Newhart show today over at the hotel. What? Because that's what Newhart lived up here. It like Newhart. He lived in Vermont. Well, Larry Darrell and his brother Darrell, and his other brother Darrell. I love Newhart. I love Newhart. I've never, I've never been to New Hampshire before. When you were it's beautiful. Oh, I met, when it's I met beautiful. Sarah Silverman, I said, "Where are you from?" She said, "New Hampshire." I said, "Where's that?" She went, "Are you being serious?" I said, "Yeah." And she goes, "You've never been to New Hampshire?" And I go, "Who's been to New Hampshire?" I'd only been to Florida. Yeah. You heard it here, everybody. Sarah Silverman's an elitist Jew. <laughs> Whoa. I mean, it's not weird Get that you've never been here. It's weird that you haven't heard of it. I never even, I didn't know it was a state. I really, honestly, I was like, I was like, I didn't know that, I didn't know that like. Like New England. It was like little stuff. I didn't learn a lot in college. I learned yeah. a lot out of college. I didn't know that like, I didn't understand like. District of Columbia versus right. Washington versus Washington State. I think oh, that's shit. how you get into college. Let, uh, let him tell you all about the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico. It's a principality. <laughs> I knew that. I knew that. Puerto you knew Rico that was. Yeah, I knew. Pennsylvania is yeah. a Commonwealth. Virginia is a Commonwealth. What's they a Commonwealth change their laws. Mean? It's uh, they can change the laws within the state. They don't have to go by the federal laws. Really? So why don't they have marijuana immediately? Because they just uh, super Christian. You know what I mean? Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> You think that in Puerto Rico? Oh no, Puerto Rico. I think weed. we need to bring yeah. God into think. weed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, that gets whenever there's drugs involved in religion is where it gets really weird. It's exactly. Really weird. And you start cults. Yep. That's what you have. You have the cult leader status. But I was saying that last night on I stage. I no, no, no. Do you look if at the you way you're said, sitting oh, right Bert, now, you can use your go. powers for evil in a heartbeat. My God. Literally, yummy. if you said to those people, <laughs> "Let's go," when you walk out. Tip your car over. Everybody go tip the cars. Damn. That's blowing your load pretty quick, though. <laughs> yeah. And then, a biggie. and then I have a cult that can't get anywhere. Yeah, they go. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bunch of this noise in the parking lot. <laughs> Bert, what do you want us to do next? All right, just... tip them back over. Oh, shit. <laughs> tip them back over. Roll them back. Just Roll... try it. Just tell everybody on the right side to switch to the left and see if that works. What if the day came where audience... You had to like you had armies against other comics audiences. Oh, I would love that for kickball but, tournaments. And you, not even we're talking Guys, battle. We're gonna go ground Matt Rife's audience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are we charge the Rife's? <laughs> what you are gonna just beat up a hot a bunch of hot twenty two? No, we're just gonna ground just a bunch of girls. girls going going to go, Guys, don't let your daughters out of the house. <laughs> Put them in the house. I'm Chris Rife's from the clan, Dalia. Yeah. <laughs> Does your clan have a name yet? No, like uh, like Rihanna's we'll name. The Wu Clan. The Wu Clan. Right, no, I, if I, I don't know. I, you know, it's so funny when you I should first call them the Cogs, comedy. dude. The Cogs in the Machine. That's so funny. Whoa. There was Whoa. this. 
There was this dude that's so. <laughs> you just literally dude, give me my smoked moment. enough joint. Now you're done for the <laughs> life. <laughs> Drink that in. <laughs> so there was a guy that hit you. who was. I used, to have a ro- I used to have a roller coaster show called Birth Conqueror. And we did two seasons and then it kind of just went away. And, and I ended up signing a deal and doing more with Travel Channel. But within that second season, there was a guy who tried to get me canceled by saying that my show was fake. That you didn't ride these roller coasters. I didn't coasters. ride these roller coasters. <laughs> you green screen them? <laughs> well, he thought the moon landing. He's like, yeah. it's like the moon landing. Yeah. First goes to a fake. green screen and then you just go. Stands there. They shows up at the end, he, like he, those people who run those marathons dude, who take the subway. Who watches somebody? Like who watches somebody enjoying a roller coaster and just goes, "It's all bullshit." Bullshit, dude. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. I I I've worked in TV before, dude. This is bullshit. He made. I it. worked fourteen summers working for the Cyclone. No one fucking makes a face well, like you that on bullshit? a drop. Like Bear Grylls uh, used to go to a fucking hotel. It was that it was, was his bullshit. It was that um that the challenges I was doing weren't real. That they were set up by the production company. Um, it, and it's it was kind of crazy because I was lot, like, isn't that when a bull trampled you? Yeah, like it was everything <laughs> happened. Everything really happened. So I don't know what he. I never really understood it. But I, I came to his. He made a full video like a. Uh, this man's a lie. Expose. Yeah, and he did a whole video, and then my fans. This is when I just started doing Rogan, and like, not my fans, but like our fans, kind of came after him, and they. I mean, they went after him, and they I think they stole his email, and, like, they got his email. Like, they they fucking tortured this fucking wow. poor guy. They quartered guy. him. Oh, I wish it's, it's I why, It's why you don't talk. It's why you don't speak up. Yeah. Because it's like, when you ever you see someone go, hold on, this, and then they, then they go, oh, good, you got them. Now let's turn on this guy. And so they yeah. turn on this guy, and in the comments, someone said, you have been dealt with by the cogs of the machine. And I and I was so Ooh. funny you say that because I was like, oh, that would be a cool name. But but I, it was at the time when like that wasn't cool to have like a following. It Remember, still like, isn't. Like <laughs> Dane had the Dane Train or something. That's what they were called. No, they were called Daniacs or like. Dude, naming what your fans. What was Dane's Daniacs, fans I think called? that's what it was. It was Daniacs? I think so. Please, someone no. look that up. Every fan group name is whack to a, a non fan. Until yeah. you're the Soderholics. Like yeah. Soderholics. Soderholics. <laughs> I mean, like the bonfires of the campers. Yeah, the campers, campers, yeah. And then uh, Tom's Tom's fan, he calls them the Proud Boys. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, but no, like like that was the last. That was the last one. That was the last one. Was Gavin McGinnis called his? I can't. I gotta fucking work. Gavin McGinnis called his fans the Proud Boys. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and it was a joke name. Yep. That, yep. That's why I had a hard time taking that whole thing serious for the longest time. When so I was like, they're just podcast. When fans. Biden right. said it. Was the craziest thing in the world to me. Yeah. I'm like, those shitheads that just drink and do coke in bathrooms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In suits. But I, mean, I never. Like, I thought the whole thing was like a silly, like, drinking club. It, yeah, do you have to, like, come up with the names for your fans? I think. No, you no, can't do that. It's organic. like giving yourself it's a nickname. It's supposed to organically happen. Yeah, yeah you're supposed you to have that give bio. A nickname. The biopic moment. Can. <laughs> I'm giving myself a couple, including the machine. But that's because you couldn't speak. <laughs> yeah. You get the cool ones like Slipknot you didn't maggots. Do it on purpose. What's up, maggots? Is that the Slipknot fans? Yeah. What are the corn fans? The Colonels. Oh. <laughs> Freaks, I think. Colonels. Cobbs. I don't think they actually have a thing necessarily. They're the Cobbs. But it's just, if you're in a band, to bring that to the band and you go, hey, we're going to call them the fucking ass lickers. And you go, what's up, Steve? You're on bass. Yeah. Hey, Limp, turds. Limp biscuits, just Limp Limp biscuits are the flower. They have one. They, yeah. they would strike me they as a band. flowers. I'm and kidding. then you got to okay. sell them. I was almost, I was going to be like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> like I'll find Gene a way to... Simmons sells those Kiss fans. Kiss the Army. Coffins. Yeah. Kiss, Kiss Army, Army. But they have everything. Yeah. The coffins. He came into Bonfire to push. Uh, money soda. bag soda. And he said we'd all be drinking it in five years. And honestly, it's been about four, and I don't think I've ever seen it. He interrupted my show once at the improv because I was doing a long before Donald Trump was president or anything like that. I just was like, his head looks like you should hire a hairy midget to sit up there. It'd be like less distracting. Yeah. And he stood up and he was like, that's my friend. Don't talk about my friend. And I was like, uh, okay. He interrupted like, the show yeah. to stop and I, you. But I didn't know who it was. I go, yeah, I'm sure it's your friend, right? I go, you got to stand up. And then they go, it's Gene Simmons. And I go, I used to love you. I bought Lavoris. Remember the red 
the red mouthwash to spit out yeah, for your yeah. concerts. Like I was a kid. I used to love you. Oh, I go, but fuck you, soda. dude. You better take yeah. a bite Oh, I thought you were going to say, obviously, they're friends yeah. because they both have wacky hair. Right. Uh, Gene I thought, I thought, no. I thought you were going to say that he was probably talking to someone and then just heard that one. Fucking hair looks like a rat nest. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Because I said, the like demon is probably the Who said that? There's yeah. such a handful of people in the world that have that hair. It's that one guy who's in Goodfellas that I think they hung in the... In the ice truck. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Eugene Levy and that guy. <laughs> that <laughs> and Gene Simmons. Hair. And Gene Simmons, the only ones who have that hair. Yeah. And I always call it Eugene Levy hair. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's hard. It's hard if you like. I, I I I've seen a couple good ones, like fucking full head of hairs. Uh, there was this guy. Well, I shouldn't say his name. There was this guy that grew his hair long and I was the last one to know it. Like it was just his hair was like he's like a rock star and it's all over. And I was like, fuck, he has the coolest hair. And you know who used to do it? I mean, I hope we're not getting in trouble, but Bobby Kelly. What? Bobby had like a routine to his hair before he shaved it. Oh, I'm sure. Let he it had go like down. a he had like he had it like grown out and pulled down. And oh, dude, before I had my space hair, I'd yeah. fucking comb it forward. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, before I got the fucking When Bobby procedure. did the bus tour with Dane. He when he yeah, did, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Bobby did the bus tour with Dane. Isn't that crazy? What the bus I mean, Bobby, we're doing a bus Gary. tour. Dude, oh, yeah. orgasm rules yeah, are pretty. We're on a bus tour. Yeah, yeah. I know. We're I know. doing the thing well, they no, did. I know we're doing it, but we're. In fact, it's fucking I'm probably way bigger, I think. You know, they what? were doing colleges, and Dane was making all the money, and Bobby and them were just getting yeah, snacks. When Bobby, uh, now that Bobby's on the show, uh, the bonfire, like Jacob, our producer, went through and watched all of Torgasm, just keeps bringing us in. <laughs> Him yelling at Jay Davis, dude. It's so funny. Well, now it's all drops. They play every day where he goes. Because Jay Davis shot Jay Davis shot him from two. I told you this already, right? Yeah, no, no. Tell me again. I like it. He, he, he shot him from like four feet away, <laughs> and there's like a ten foot rule in in whatever in paintball, or whatever. And then it's just Jay in his full paintball like thing and holding his gun while Dane's just flipping out on him, like yelling at him. <laughs> and he just goes, <laughs> Jay, you know what? Get the fuck out of my face, man. Because it's like every time I try to have fun, you gotta go and and break a rule. <laughs> <laughs> there should have been it's over the 10 that was paintball rule. You there should break, have been like, just start over <laughs> oh and then he goes wait one, go keep going the best part of that is because then as we point in he apologized that, that dane wouldn't do the tuesday night at dublin's anymore for three no, months no, dane, dane does, does an apology <laughs> he does an apology on the show but it's a confessional to him by himself and he goes yeah, he goes, I was a little rough on Jay. I was, I was actually, I was being a dick, actually. You know, I said some shitty stuff, and, like, I apologize. You know, he's like, you know, he's better than me. Like, if if I, friendship or not, if I had said, if he had said the things to me that I said to him, like, man, I would have, like, beat the shit out of him. So he goes, I apologize to him. Also, he's a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> That is the that is the if I were there, nine eleven wouldn't have happened. Of apologies, <laughs> can you imagine being Dane Cook when that or that all that when the world fucking switched and was like it's Dane time? Well, I think it's also and, like and he was it, the last uh, guy to be nineties famous, where it like it's all awesome. he was famous when famous counted. Yeah, yeah when you yeah. when you had to earn it, like you couldn't you couldn't just like you had to earn it. Now you can get famous for you know fucking. There's dudes that are legit famous for TikTok. TikTok, of course. Like, and, and, but he, that, can you, how old was he? Can someone Google how old Dane was when that happened to him? Like 32. Oh, I guess maybe? I can tell you. No, no. he had, had to be. No. I, I was had, there I had in Dublin. We were, we're doing those all the time, right? He had to be 32. Was, yeah. He was about yeah. 32 because we were all around the same age. Everybody was, Tuesday nights at Dublin's were always good. But then Dane invested in my space and he's. He was talking about that, and then the next thing you know, more and more people would show up, and then Justin Timberlake and yeah. Britney Spears start showing up, and then I don't there's even know lines if that story, out the door. And that story was ever true, but it's one of the coolest like legend stories. Though. Like, no, he really they, no, no, no. When they were like, not that story, yeah, the all like, like uh, why should we give you a something or whatever? And he just logged into MySpace oh, on yeah. the computer and like no, freeze yeah. or froze. He was he trying to work a deal. He'd work a deal, and he'd go. They'd say, so I don't understand why we should give you the money you're asking for. And he goes, I'll show you why. And it was the Orlando Improv. And he went like this, and he opened his computer, and he typed in, I'll be in Orlando tomorrow, and hit click. And then he was like, watch this. And went to the Orlando website, and it was fucking sold out already. Jesus. And then he was like, watch this. Adding a second show. Click. <laughs> and then they, and they were just like this. And it was such quick time that he was like, click. And they were like, 
sold out again and they're like all right whatever you want wow. yeah. yeah he's he was that, i would do that and it's like there's been nine tickets sold <laughs> in 12 hours you sold nine <laughs> your move orlando improv we're gonna condense it down to one me, show. Go, me and that's smart i think me and you both uh complain to our people about that i was like you can't send me the numbers like oh, anymore, yeah. like the before numbers, because you're nah. like, I'm gonna kill myself, man. Oh, yeah. like, oh, dude, I'll tell you right now, it'll t bone you on a Wednesday. You'll be like, Oh, this is a good week, then you go email no. ticket <laughs> counts 41 oh, for Thursday. I mean, uh, I literally like that is, the, that is the funniest when you start saying, like, I'm not the person to just like o- overplay and just be like, Dude, guys, good scan, we're gonna party. I just go, Uh, don't if you're coming, don't come to the Saturday or the the Friday late show. No one else seems to be. (laughs) Yeah, we should have social media should be more honest. We should have to film ourselves reading those emails, being like, guys, this weekend, woof, what did I do to you, Columbus? You gotta you gotta film the first two rows of yourself going, What's up? You guys, this weekend it's gonna be crazy. Hold on, I got the email. Here's the ticket count. No one Fuck. understand what Jay just said. That's the funniest. Like, is that Jay goes, he's on stage and he films the camera up here. He goes, there's just the first two rows. <laughs> yeah. What's up? Just, and they just stage that, but they can only just catch you. There's nowhere to pass you. There's yeah. just enough food to catch you. Just down and back up. <laughs> uh, hey. that, those ticket counts changed my career. Like when they started sending me ticket counts, because yeah. I was like, because I was like, oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to focus on cleaning up shows that need help. Right. That's yeah. the right approach. For yeah. you. Because you have a, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I go it's more the same audience. <laughs> yeah. like it's, I could tell them that we're failing as a group. I'll tell you this. <laughs> you don't like me enough, and I guess I haven't done enough for you to like me more. <laughs> <laughs> That's the energy I give off. My problem is I got, I got all these clubs think all my rap fans are going to come. And they don't come at all, yo. They're like, oh, he's got a big hip-hop following. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. No, nothing. It's like they like that community didn't even, support you at all the fans. They don't even know I do comedy. You and do you see people find out that you do? Do you see people find out that you do it? They're like, oh shit! Bro, I've been whatever. doing comedies since 08, seriously since eleven. Yeah, started the cellar in fifteen. Yeah, today there'll be someone at the comedy cellar, like some black or Spanish kid, bring with their girl, and they'll be like, yo, my man, you mad funny. I didn't even know you did comedy. I'm like, yeah. it, it's all I post. Yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. I do. Yeah. I'm you here right your radio day. show you were still talking about. The st- I know it wasn't Tracy like... Tracy Morgan the- talks to you while you're there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's so funny? The first time I met Saifa, I think we were doing the Impractical Jokers. Impractical Jokers, yeah. And I said, he's got to change his name. And they go, oh, I go, there's another Saifa sound. That's really funny. <laughs> and they were like, no, that's the same one. What? I said, I said no, the other one's like, are you serious? She goes, legit. This guy's a New York DJ. Yeah. He's pretty tough. <laughs> uh, and I was like, I was like, I don't He's know. super badass. And I was like, I follow a lot. I'm talking to Sal Volcano. I go, I follow a lot of hip hop. <laughs> and so you guys don't know this. <laughs> He's like, yeah, it's that, it's that guy. It's the and, guy. Then, and, then, and then they were laughing and they were, oh, I had a dream about Ari. Oh. I had a dream about Ari last night. <laughs> the, the, and there, yeah, I was walking. We were at... Uh, was he wearing a Kobe jersey? No, no, no. <laughs> we were walking down a, a stairwell, and I said, hey, I'm sorry to hear about the skeptic tank. And he looked at me, and he walked down the stairs with me a little bit, and he goes, you don't care, do you? And I said, of course I do. And he goes, "What well, name an episode. And I went, you're right, I haven't listened. And he was <laughs> like, so then why do you care if it's gone? And I went, oh, buddy, I... I don't know. I, why do you do this to me? And then we just, and then I woke up. I was going to say, you dreamed an actual Ari. That was real. That I, was oh, that's a real Ari. I have a real dream <laughs> of Ari. That was an actual conversation. <laughs> or Ari's in your dreams. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's, he's in your my your Freddy Krueger? <laughs> yeah. He's like, hey. <laughs> he's at home somewhere chanting. He ended Skeptic Tank. Yeah. yeah. Good, I mean, good for him. Well, he's got to do something else. Yeah, I know, but like, no, good just, for him to make a, I love him. I love when people make decisions and change. He just said he said he's just Same done game. doing like inter the the version of interview yeah. podcasting he does. Yeah. He should do you I mean, have look, something looser, I think. I wish he could ju- I wish he would take any advice from anyone and not hear what he thinks is right. But like he should do something traveling because he loves traveling. Yeah, yeah. That's his life. He's fun to travel All with right. too. Why don't, uh, you guys and he does give the me stuff. Advice. He's like you, you Bert. Take in that me. way. <laughs> What's that? In that way, like he's like you though. He'll do the stuff. Like the yeah. stuff you don't want to that. Oh like, yeah. I don't want to do that. He's like, yeah, we're going to go off the Mosquito Coast and, <laughs> you know, trap gators. Like, huh? <laughs> yeah, he he really knows a lot about traveling, but he does this thing, which is I'm, I've always been torn between because is that he knows the place that's cool, like the restaurant that's the best place 
to get a cheesesteak in Philly, but he won't tell you about it because he doesn't want to ruin it for himself. For everybody, yeah. And <laughs> which, which the owner of that that's place. That's an awesome, that's a hilarious thing to be, which it makes sense, is this selfish travel guide where they're like, where should I get a drink? He's like, why should I tell you? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, because he goes, it's a great place. I'm and it's only it great myself. because it's quaint yeah. and no one's there. And I can get, and I can have fun. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, there's an island. <laughs> there's an island. <coughs> and don't worry, Ari, I'm not going to do it. I know you think yeah. I'm going to do it. And by the way, if I was Ari, I would do it. Yeah. I'd tell the name of the fucking place. Because, you know, Ari would be like, island. chaos rules. Yeah, yeah, Ari's the guy in the movie The Beach that ruins the beach. When everyone starts showing yeah, up. No, <laughs> yeah, no start I'm the guy killed. that ruins the beach. Yeah, I'm like, the guy that ruins the beach. Ari's the guy. Ari's Leo. <laughs> yeah. So um, he, there's an island in Croatia that he said, if you, if you have time, you should go. I'll tell you the island, but you got to swear to God you'll never tell anyone. And I said, why? And he goes, because it's perfect. It's perfect the way it is. I bet anyone with a business on that island is like, yo, tell everybody. Yeah. But Ari's, I don't know if he's right or wrong in that. I don't know if he's right or wrong in that. Because it was like, I know that, that it's ruined great restaurants. Man versus Food and Guy's Grocery Grams have put them over and they've made them a lot of money. Yeah. But you can't get a table. You can't get one of those sandwiches. Right. Well, Dennis Rodman, <laughs> well, also, I a lot of times they have to turn the over so fast then that they also lose quality. Denix in, 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 so, yeah. in Reading Station in Philly is the best sandwich in the world and you just can't get it anymore. <coughs> so like, do, does that ruin the place or does it help the place? I don't know. Do you know that guy, that food blogger, Keith Lee? He like shows like recipes and stuff or he'll show specials that restaurants are doing. The fuck no. kind of question was that to ask yeah, everyone? Yeah. But uh, you thought someone was going to say yes to that. Yeah, yeah, I did. I don't know. You guys, that's not do, great. Do you guys follow restaurant tour? No, it's just this guy. I saw on Twitter, this guy, he does like these like food deals. And the problem is, is all these like, he does them at like Chick-fil-A or like Jimmy John's. And then he puts them up online and the Jimmy John's just get crushed. And it's these people not making shit being like, today was like hell for me. Like there's like these videos of people being like, stop sending people your, I want to fucking kill myself. We and he's like, this sandwich is a little magic. And he's like, it's good. He's like, yeah, dude, it's, it's fucking hilarious. And I thought people knew that. It's like Jay. an old Dom Irera joke. Just I what I need. Food Customers. Yeah. I, you I have a lot of time on Everyone my hands. Everyone here is familiar with food blogs. Jay, I have Keith. a lot of time on my hands Keith now. Lee. I've gotten into food blogs. You know food blogger Keith Pete Lee. Is he a white guy? Keith Lee. No, he's black dude. Oh. Pete really Lee's a white really comic. Know. I know Pete Lee. Wait, Pete Lee's doing food blog? No, <laughs> no Keith Lee. Pete Lee's stressed. Keith Robinson. Yeah, he's like, blog. this price <laughs> is terrible. <laughs> this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. It is so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. It's the truth, man, especially as a dad. I look back at my dad and how much we asked of him, and he just never said no and coached my, my baseball and, and, and coached my sister's softball and ran my sister to cheerleading practice and, and, and paid the bills and, and, and got us a car when we needed a car. And, and you know what he could have benefited from? Therapy. My dad could have really benefited from therapy. I can promise you that. I'm in therapy. I've been in therapy for a long time. I only do online therapy because for me, all the extracurriculars of getting yourself to therapy would make me crazy and I'd start hating it. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule, and that's what makes online therapy awesome. All you got to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Bert today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Bert. Grunt Style is a lifestyle brand that distills pure, 100-proof American fighting spirit and shares it in the form of high-quality patriotic apparel, a veteran-found company that honors service at home and abroad with more than 200 veterans on staff. It's a lot of veterans are doing good for Grunt Style has taken the American fighting spirit and stilled it on everything they do. Grunt Style makes high-quality clothing with patriotic themes that wave the American flag with pride. To Grunt Style, what you wear is more than just a necessity. It's about attitude. They've taken the American fighting spirit and instilled it in everything they do. You don't have to be a veteran to wear Grunt Style, but you do have to love freedom, bacon, and whiskey. 
That is my threesome of fun right there. They provide more than apparel. They instill pride. Birdcast listeners get 15% off any order at Grunt Style. Always go to gruntstyle.com and use code BIRDCAST15 and check out for 15% off your entire order every time or go directly to Bur- the BIRDCAST collection page at the, t- at the gruntstyle.com uh, address on your screen right now and use the code BIRDCAST15 at checkout for 15% off your order. I don't know. What, what should Ari do? About, I mean, a travel show would be great. A travel show would be perfect. Like if he him. did a travel show on on YouTube, shot at himself, edited himself, because he's really good at that. Like I like when he shoots it himself. Sure. Um, no, he'd hire the right people for. It. Yeah, I don't, he should do that. I don't know. I think when he just goes away, he wants to like really vanish. Really random place. Well, go I places appreciate... and not tell people where he is. And war Bert, zones. Send him to war yeah. zones. But, uh, he should go to war also, zones. Also, Bert, you probably can appreciate too. Like I work more like you and at least like you know not like in the same realms but like do a ton of like stuff like are you really like he doesn't but he's in new york and he's like i'm gonna take a month off of podcasting and comedy and just like refuel and whatever and i'm like that's awesome <coughs> like, i wish awesome i could do shit. that i have a cough i can't get rid of i'm, I'm I, I i literally i can't do that at all I, I monetize everything i try to maximize my my time to work more and i it's nuts me and christine went to a a house for four days in the hamptons like a couple weeks ago yeah that's the first time i've ever gone somewhere exclusively and not and not worked and now, like and not, i mean i've done i've gone to nice places beautiful places and the cruises and stuff but like that's all uh attached to work always oh it's always attached to work even if i take the girls to if i take the, if i take the girls abroad i try to book a gig yeah because i'm like why well, i'm here i might as well yeah you know and i don't even this whole trip i mean this is our summer my girls are on tour with me and and it's awesome. It's like a vacation, but it's working. I don't understand. You know, I, I have a hard time. If I followed no one's advice, meaning like Ari or Tom, I would never spend money because I don't really care to spend money. Like I never, I don't need new cars and st- watches and stuff. But Tom's the one that kind of got me to like appreciate watches a little bit. But I wouldn't. I would. Ari's like Ari will call me like you need time off, and I go yeah I know. He's like take some time for yourself. I was like that's not how the world works. It works for you that way. When you're, you know, 50 and and you don't have no responsibilities. You only pay for yourself. Yeah, exactly. well, his wants yeah. are very little, though, too. <laughs> he wants very little. And yeah, he really thing, I say the things wants. I want, like, dumb, like, like I'm, I want to have a pool. He'd be like, or he's like, you could swim in a puddle, dude. He's like, that's a good shit. He's There's like, a creek out back. I, I get bored with time off, man. If I go on for family vacations. I, I, I yeah. do, too, after yeah. a little bit, for sure. I get a little stir crazy, for sure. Four but days you also, is great. But you're also, doing four days in the Hamptons. <laughs> think four days. Four, four days might be five, the perfect. I went amount. to Mexico City like a month ago for like include yeah, five days, including the travel. Yeah, perfect amount of time. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no, in and out for sure. I don't, I'm not looking to do a whole. <laughs> and I, I, can't, look, I can't do a month. But I'm like definitely a, looking for a show out there. But no, you're right. A month off of like everything, like broadcasting everything, I'd be like, no, nah, uh, no, nah, I, I can't do just, it. Doesn't There's make any sense. Which I just did. Five days in Naples, Florida, but I took my whole family and I worked every single night. Right. That's and great. I was so annoyed because they're like having a great time. <laughs> I'm like, I gotta go to work. Yeah. Stop. I have to leave. Yeah. It's so yeah. annoying. Well, you know what's so funny when I hate when I hated my apartments in life is when you're in them the most. <laughs> and then <laughs> when you love when you love where you live, it's like, oh man, my yeah. bed is so because the hotel bed was better than my piece of shit bed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's an upgrade. So now when you're like a hotel bed, you're like this isn't set to my firmness. Like, this is a great vacation. I'm <laughs> so, like, I have three shows. I have a beach house I've been to like three times. That's really? it? Really? Yeah. And, I, and 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 Le- Leanne and the girls have used it a ton and my family's used it. I've never been there because I work. And if I go, and then she's like, we don't work after fully loaded. She wants to take seven, wants me to take seven weeks off. And I'm like, oh. Seven weeks. I was weeks. like, what the fuck am I going to do? What am I, Segura? You should come back <laughs> super jacked. <laughs> you know, you know, Dude, come back! Ever full makeover? No, I'm talking about three percent body fat, <laughs> just chiseled, Momoa, dude. Where you're like, where your cheekbones bother me? Yeah, where they're that's... too sharp. Maybe I will. Get Dude, a just come back. Glutide. Come back with like sweatpants, but they're hanging in a way where you're like, are you fucking ripped? I like this. Strap low. Maybe I will. That'd be awesome. Maybe I'll just. Maybe I'll, I was. I was jokingly talking about going to rehab, just to have some time off. You know. Yeah. Like to, so that I have to take some time off, but not. I don't want to do sober rehab. Like I want to do one of the fun ones in like Arizona, where they're like, it's a silent rehab. Just don't do meth. 
It would be fun. From bread. No, yeah, like, like they, they clean up your diet, but you can have white wine and weed. Yeah. And they're like, oh, oh. yeah, of course, we're going to do mimosas. Yeah. I'll try that. <laughs> I don't drink or smoke, but I want to clean up my that diet. That does sound fun, yeah. man. They Sounds have great. they have them in uh, Malibu. They're, they're that like you meet people like, like, this is Great the new lead singer of Warren. John <laughs> Panette went to one of those where yeah. they just... There you the go. Biggest yeah. Loser has one. <laughs> yeah. The biggest so Loser you just basically go and they're like, hey, you're not allowed to have candy. Right. But you can have this... They know they prepare your meals. They prepare your meals. You can't you don't have access to bad foods. Like you don't have access. You can bring edibles and stuff. Dude, rehab's when you meet the most. Like that's when you're like, you know, I became good friends with Tom Sizemore <laughs> and Gabrielle Sidibe. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, what? And the former VP of MetLife. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the guy that you didn't know. Some crazy person crashed his life on a corporate boardroom. Oh. Richard Fonda's niece was in that's there. That's what living in New York. You meet people that grew up in New York, and they're all like. Like the kids from Manhattan were like, I was in rehab by the time I was 13. Yeah. That's always yeah. the thing. Oh, you're yeah. like, oh, you guys are tiny little adults. Oh, they're yeah. like the rich kids of Manhattan. They're like, I was doing blow at 12. Their whole lives are cool. My boys went to high school with, um, I guess Paris Hilton went to high school in New York for a yeah. couple of years. Yeah. And she lived in the Waldorf. Yeah. So like all these little white graffiti kids yeah. would be hanging out with Paris Hilton, graffitiing up the Waldorf. That's fucking <laughs> hilarious. Tagging under tables and shit. And then they got to go to her dad and they're like, your daughter's bringing in some unsavory. <laughs> it's like that scene in Pretty Woman where they're yeah. trying to escort him out. I thought that was the sexiest thing in the world, the Hilton sisters, when I moved to New York. Really? I was like, that is so fucking cool. They'd have two heiresses that like in the partied yeah, in the club and were scene. like and in the club scene and were like just took limos everywhere. I was like, that is the coolest do, thing. Do you, you, know, um, you, do, you know how naturally alluring that woman is? She came into the bonfire once, and me and Dan instinctively started battling each other for like Approval. to make her laugh. Yeah. <laughs> like Dan, Dan got her laugh first, and I was like, whoa, hang on. And then she's like, then she walked out. By the way, 15 minutes before that. She was in the room next to us with a big bay window with uh, Fat Jewish doing some interview. Yeah. Really? And we were playing. So definitely won that We were playing her blowjob on the TV. We were playing roulette and see if like if she looked up, but we had time enough to click the screen off. <laughs> it was of a dangerous video. game. It was a dangerous game. And I then she a, was lovely. I have yeah. a question for you. Do you ever fantasy book? Like, you know how they do, like, Muhammad Ali versus Mike Tyson? Yeah. Do you ever do partying with celebrities? Oh, yeah, like all the time, but it's all guys. Paris Hilton and O2 or, like... Oh, that's... I haven't... You know what I mean? Like, you do, like... Hist you know when you play video games, sometimes you can be, like, <laughs> the 86 Celtics versus the 01 Sixers? Yeah. Like, do you ever do that with partying? Oh, yeah. Are you like, Morrison? Fucking 71. Hendricks and Joplin? Hendricks, Joplin, Kreischer? Can I go against the the Lizard King? Or you're like, Marin <laughs> Hendricks. <laughs> oh, I'll take, I'll take uh, 91, uh, 91, no. Axel? No, hold on. Hold on. I got my 91 Downey Jr. Ooh! Okay. Versus 44 Ooh. Hitler. Ooh. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a lot of drugs, and that's women wow. pooping on glass. Uh, <laughs> that's 44 some glass Hitler. bottom. Oh. 44 Hitler is pretty crazy, but then you got to think like, what about like Elvis, oh, 73, wow. or like fucking Keith Richards, 72? <sighs> why? Why did Keith Richards live and Elvis died? Cause... I don't know, but if you do, if you start getting those circles, though, it leads to gay stuff. Just so you know. Oh, stop it. All those Gender guys started banging fluid. dudes, and they're all with their excuses are always like, I got so bored of fucking every yeah, chick yeah, I it's wanted. Power. And I'm like, it's all power. Oh the first guy goes, that I don't think themselves. that's a real wall you hit. But also, the, <laughs> the I, think, guy, I think it's in you. But you know what? That's the, the guy that first thought of that excuse, that light went off. So and he, went, he goes, oh, yeah, that's it. He was, I got so much pussy, I had to try dick. Four <laughs> different pussies? How much pussy does a guy need? <laughs> yeah. I Sorry, mean, guys. I'm full on I pussy. might as well try some <laughs> cock now for the rest of my life. Mm, this he isn't goes, that bad. <laughs> okay. Mick, Jagger called David Bowie and he goes, I fucking had a breakthrough <laughs> to say we fuck so many women that it's, it's not totally who we fucked. Goes, David, I've broken it open. <laughs> I'm done with that Ma now. Remember how your wife walked in on me blowing you? I, someone, I was talking to someone, oh, I forget shit. who, they were like, they were like, yeah, I just was wondering what it was like to get fucked in the ass. And I said, that's so funny. That's never crossed my mind. <laughs> like, never have I been like... And I thought about a lot of things. I was like... Well, let me tell you. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that feels like, feels like one of those city... Doesn't feel good. Yes, Tam, Tam, say it isn't so. It feels like one of those city council meetings where Tammy walks I'm up to the microphone. <laughs> goes, Hello, Tammy uh, Cascatelli. Hello. She's here to let you know anal is real. <laughs> it's more real. of a pressure than a pain. <laughs> and what are you doing about it, Senator? Oh... <laughs> uh, you have a good sex life with your husband, Tammy? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> just, we no. just, it's not. She had the ice bath just to feel yeah. again. Yeah. No, it's, you know what? I'm exhausted anymore. Yeah. I really am. Like, it's very hard. He used to wait for me to come home and it was all exciting. And then we're just tired. I'm tired now. I'm just too old to be on the road the way I am. And I how think. Often are you, how often are you on the road? I go out every week. Really? Yeah, like yeah, I have to make up for all those that all that downtime and you yeah. know. Oh yeah. Oh, I mean, oh, yeah. I'm still in clubs and and getting in trouble for ticket counts on the late show Friday. Yeah. <laughs> you God. know? Right so, there with your sister. Yeah. So I'm uh, Oh, you know. so we all agree. Me and Dan used to talk about this all the time. That when we first started Bonfire, like the how many waitresses put on their street clothes for the second <sighs> show and start leaving. And you get yeah, and, and you know. go I made the mistake a few times that I learned to go like Oh, uh, like uh, there's not enough people. He goes, "Hey, you're not gonna hang out and watch the show." I'm like, "I have a babysitter." Yeah. So I have to, I'm, no, like, the I'm last sorry, guy, I failed you. <laughs> the last club that that didn't like when the late show Friday, the guy goes, "Well, you know, uh, John Reap gives gingers tickets for free." I go, "Oh, well, maybe that'll work for me. Why didn't you advertise that for me?" Yeah. I'm like, I don't, I have no idea. John but, Reap gives gingers tickets for free on That's late hilarious. show Friday. It's fucking hilarious. I like the mm -hmm. idea of the guy that knows that deal exists, and he goes, "Hey, what are we doing Friday? You know what?" John Reap's in town. We got hair. orange hair. <laughs> I go. like the idea Might of a, bunch of, you got a bunch, dick hair. <laughs> a bunch of gingers <laughs> touring like fish fans. Yeah. Just for John Reap. Reap. And they're outside like just uh, the Reapers. Waiting the in Reapers. line. They're putting on sunscreen. Like, yeah. It's a nice show. They <laughs> they're waiting in line. We, and we do People are like driving past. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I just get tired. Like, the I, Freckle Brigade. I love him. Yeah. Still, love who? Uh, my husband. Oh, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I like yeah. to fuck Reap. That's why I can't. I was like, you love no. him. No, I, I love him. We, j I do. I just, I'm tired, and I think. Plus, I wasn't feeling good about my own body. Like you, you got to be tired. You have a great body. He's got to be tired of having sex with me. No, he's just got to be. No, does for he real. go for it? No, he likes it a lot, but it, I don't. No, I'm I think saying, it's does fake. he go for it? And you're like, I'm tired. No, I'll, I'll do it. Just you know, but it, you know, let's hurry up kind of thing. That's the attitude. Schedule My it. wife and I were like that. That makes guys come quick. Recently. Yeah. Well, no, her, yeah, be like, okay. He goes, finish quick. He goes, All right. Well, okay, because guys go to sleep, right? Have yeah, sex true. and you go to sleep. It wakes me up. I'm extremely ADD. If you give me something to do, yeah. I'm up Well, completely. work harder, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throw your ass into it. No, I'm so... Stop just so... laying there like a pillow. Yeah, no. I try to make it happen fast, so I, I, I do put in a lot of work. It's too much. Man, there's nothing worse than wanting it to happen fast like them needing it to happen fast and you're like oh fuck no go 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 you're, you're gonna get noodle weenie yeah yeah exactly yeah. you're gonna get, get banging around on nothing don't put pre don't put me on a clock it's worse though i'll have sex with him because the thought of us not like being together like i don't think i could start fresh with someone new no oh way. i couldn't i could you know what i, I mean could. No. oh there's no, it's literally there's so many secrets i have to tell them <laughs> um, you ever have, have a, a large debriefing session? Oh my god! Yeah, I have to There's a new president. A yeah. Person. He goes, yeah. all right. You're gonna get clearance as time moves on. You will get more clearance. Oh my god! Can Here's some imagine? national secrets. I can't imagine the things they would say to me that my wife's never said. Like my wife's never said, "Hey, can you go brush your teeth?" But I'm sure there's been times. I'm, I'm sure she just goes, ah, "I'll just take one for the team." It's already happening. The I'm amount of get... stinky shit that I do around her is oh, offensive, dude. and I, I feel bad because I can't smell, so I don't ever have, like, the weight behind it of, like, oh, that was a stinky one. I just yeah. go for funny. That's why you were always blown away how much I farted in front of people. I really, I've, I have a thing with that in general. I just hilariously was, uh, was hanging out at a house with friends with a handsome guy who just farts a lot in front of everybody, the girls and everything, and I think it's so weird. And Dan, yeah, they were like, Fart in front of Christine, like you know, with like the laugh of like a burnt. Yeah. Uh, and I was always like, Wow, That's man, funny. I would work diligently to never fart in front of Leanne. And something in there about that, no, is because in the depth of her mind, I don't want her to think that I'm gross and unfuckable. 
I'm not trying to fuck yeah, your yeah, wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just don't want her to think I'm a gross person. And <laughs> I can promise you, if the timing is correct, I'm going to crack one off around Leanne by the end of this weekend. I would love yeah. that. I would love that. <laughs> I used to think that was I so could promise cool you when that. women would do that. I'll never forget. I was like... 14, 15 years old and like fart around your boyfriend. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to try it. And I shit my pants just a little and I never did it again. All right, well, yeah, you know, know. lesson learned. Yeah, that'll teach you a lesson. That was, mm-hmm. Don't take bad advice ever again. <laughs> the, uh, I, uh, Guys love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you tell him? I, I, I've, 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 I, I've always waited to get to the point where I can start farting around a person. It's great. I fart around everyone now. Yeah. Is there a person around God here bless. who hasn't seen you fart? That's like how you know they're part of the crew. Yeah, well, yeah. I, have you but, heard, I, but I just have like, you heard I'm, Bert Let. Well, I'm the same way about being naked. Like, there's a like I, I assume everyone's seen me. Naked everyone's, to be on the crew. I, everyone's seen me naked. Like Stacy, have you ever seen me naked? Like a lot. Yeah. But like, oh, I, that didn't look like she was thrilled yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, they're like, hey, Jim Norton. That's why I've seen Jim Norton naked. Pete. Yeah. Jim you Norton. Have you ever seen Bert naked? No. Okay. I've seen James. I've seen James. You're not part of the crew then. Come sit down with us. Where am I going to sit? Come over here. You've probably noticed these tall boys floating around uh, the bottled water section of your local store. It's not beer, okay? It's actually a healthy beverage brand called Liquid Death. Why are they called Liquid Death? Because these little cans right here are going to murder your thirst, and their infinitely recyclable cans are helping bring death to plastic bottles all over this planet. Plastic bottles are not recyclable they're not they just get sent to landfills you can even put them in your recycling bin even if you do that they still get sent to landfills and then they're all in our oceans let me tell you something liquid death donates a portion of profits from every can to help kill plastic solution and i gotta tell you this the delivery method for me from a can is just so much better one of those cheap plastic bottles of water watch this it's almost like one sip and it goes away You can find Liquid Death's healthy beverages on Amazon or a retailer near you. And Burkhast listeners get 20% off their first Liquid Death apparel purchase available exclusively at liquiddeath.com slash Burt. Exclusions may apply. That's liquiddeath.com slash Burt. This podcast is brought to you by Helix. I love my Helix mattress. I love my, you know, I've been looking forward to sleep a lot lately. I've been back ending my day, figuring out what time I need to wake up and then figured out my bedtime and i love getting in my helix mattress putting on a here's the thing helix lineup offers 20 unique mattresses including the award-winning lux collection the newly released helix elite collection a mattress designed for big and tall sleepers and even a mattress made for kids everybody is unique and everyone sleeps differently that's why helix has several different mattress models to choose from each design for specific sleep position and feel preferences. I took the Helix Sleep Quiz and was matched with the best mattress of my damn life. So good, I bought three of them. I put one, I put them everywhere around the house. So if I ever end up in a bed, because I sleep on my side, my arm was, I've been problem with my arms. And now that is gone entirely and I sleep through the night. 97% recovery, people, all due to my Helix mattress. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners, go to helixsleep.com slash Burt. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. You look good, Jim. Thanks, yeah, uh, Burt. I feel good. better. I'm trying to lose weight again. Are you really? Yeah, yeah. It's fun Don't get too skinny, though. Yeah, I was really... You were too skinny for a period. I was AD for a long time. Yeah, it was gross. Yeah, but you look good right now. Thank you. You, can, you, should, you should get on steroids. I'm on uh, testosterone. Yeah, I'm debating. I took that stuff from the guy you recommended. Yeah. I didn't do TRT yet, but I'm actually debating TRT. It's fucking so much fun, Jim. Jim, you should it's absolutely so get jacked. Get <laughs> super jacked. Jack Jim Norton. I want everyone that does steroids, not just to do it a little, to do it a lot. I just want to get rid of my weight? tits and side oh, fat. Dude. My shoulders and tits look right. are look look low key. Jack. You're, today you'll go. Wow, he's not kidding. Jay and I were looking at you from the back, Bert, last night. We're like, look at that fucking back, dude. Dude, I've, and I love lifting weights. I'm sleeping better than I've ever slept. I wake up with a hard dick every fucking morning. It's like being in high school again. What is that? What are you doing? I I do testosterone replacement therapy, and I take 25 milligrams or something point two five milligrams every two days, and uh, and I feel great. Like I feel great. You like, inject I, it. Yeah, I love injecting it. Where to your thigh? My your ass. ass. Today, my daughter Isla did it to me, and then uh, 
but I love it. It it's really, and, and I'm telling you, I feel, I enjoy working out. I've never realized this entire time you've always looked like a retired strong man. <laughs> I, I do have. <laughs> Colin he used to throw beer kegs over walls. <laughs> you go, you know, he sets the record with the boulder hold. <laughs> oh, Bertrand Kreischer yeah. von Kreischer? Yeah, Bert yeah. von Kreischer von Kreischer. Ber uh, Magnus. Yeah, I remember Magnus, Magnus. Magnus. Yeah. How much fun is it discovering Kreischer those things Kreischer? for the first time, right? Like World Strongest Man or UFC? Do you remember where you were when you first discovered the UFC? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah I watched UFC one. It was in Denver, and we got it on. My stepdad got it for me on pay per view. Really? It was fucking awesome. I'm literally that the same exact story. Me and my step pop ordered it and thought yeah. it was the greatest thing ever. Yeah, my uh, I was with his stepfather, my karate guy, <laughs> Pat Militich, used to train me. And he did the Tough Man contest. Yeah, and he spit his teeth out, and then on Tuesday we had a session, and I was like. Wow, you, I thought you were so nice. And then you saw you spit your teeth out to keep uh, fighting a dude. Yeah, those, when you discovered, like, I remember when we first saw World's Strongest Man and, like, like Geniuses, ESPN had it on, like, an all-day repeat. Oh, yeah, ESPN2 used to play it. You ever see the Strongman Wives? No. Oh, dude, they, they just all have black eyes. <laughs> yeah. No, they're just like little tiny ladies that <laughs> scream at these. They just scream at these men. Oh. Like, fucking left that! And they're like, ah! it's fucking wild. Yeah, dude, they're, when their nose starts bleeding, when they're pulling a engineless truck. But there are still channels that play it like 24 hours a day, just back to back. I wonder what the next thing is going to be. Like, the well, money for that, I have to imagine, isn't great. Right. <laughs> no, I think they just give you horse meat. <laughs> like, they just give you pounds of horse meat if you would. People train like all year for like the you ever see a, uh what was it? Did something gym about the the arm wrestler guy? Oh. Pulling gym. It's a great documentary. But like he has to go against like some of these people train all year in their country, like arm wrestle lifting like people in wagons like Rocky Ford and shit. Over the top. And to go and like make like I think it's like one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, maybe Wait, like the winner the guy, for the winner. The guy winner. on Instagram, I think he's called the Arm Wrestling Whisperer. And he's yes, like, and he yeah, he'll, it's the sexiest thing I've ever seen. He dirty talks to me. Dirty <laughs> talks to him. He gets them and he goes, "All right, here we go." And then they go one, two, three. And he goes, Oof, and you hear him go, "Ooh, you're strong. Yeah, oh. you're strong. You might have me on this one, but you're not over yet, are you? Let's okay, let's see you push, and then I'll push and go. Ooh, you got a good pull. You got a good pull." Try one more time. Here we go. <laughs> oh, that's one, awesome. Two, three. Oh, not bad. And then he'll go, okay, are you ready for it? Because it's coming and it's coming quick. Boom. And it's all. Oh, he coaches them. He coaches them on how, how did to that do hit your arm algorithm. Muscle. My algorithm is so fucked up. <laughs> yeah, what are you up to? <laughs> My algorithm is Puerto Rican dudes getting their hair cut. Okay. Uh, oh, that's HBCU. You. Oh, dude, I that's would love to be your next haircut. But I need you to grow it out, like look like Chupacabra a little bit, yeah. and then have you line you up. Oh, uh, Wait, HBCU cheerleaders, boat launch face. videos, watches, uh, girls softball, baseball pitches, and arm wrestling vi fucking, and gay dudes. I'm really into gay dudes. Why boat launching videos? But, dude, have you ever listened to Tug Life? Watch no. Tug Life. What's Tug Life? Tug Life is well. the coolest boat videos. It's like, it's like seeing a sailboat getting trapped. Kook Slams is a good one, too. You see a, t a sailboat get trapped in the waves and you're like watching it and it's like the wave comes and then it'll almost roll and it'll pop and then you'll see it straighten out and catch a wave and ride it in dude boat videos or like or like those tankers that are in huge waters and you just see a fucking wave come and splash through and break the windows. Oh, I fucking love that shit. Yeah, I saw a Greek fishing boat or a Greek like passenger boat like that where they showed the wave come over and crash through and all the oh. people run out. Yeah, it was it was great. Did you see the one? All my stuff's like pedophile hunts and interrogation <laughs> analysis. <laughs> How to not get caught. <laughs> I did say well, I have watched enough of those that I'm like, I know what to say and do <laughs> should the situation ever arrive. Jay trained for the moment through his algorithm. It's crazy. Like I'm any, Amazon. like here's this is all boat man. stuff, watch stuff. Stuff, a good a good run video, a lot of watch stuff. But what's crazy is inevitably, fucking four videos in, I get a Theo Vaughn video. Always. Shit, a bridge ain't nothing but a brave street, and then that's it. And you're like, <laughs> you're on TikTok, you're talking about on, on fucking anything. Yeah. Theo's in my algorithm. Theo's the most. He is the comedian in my algorithm the most, without a fucking doubt. Yeah. Why did you my seek him out? Too. No, no, he just has so much content that people share. He's he really is killing it. And like he has just quotable clips that are him being like just it's him being Theo, yep, you know? Yep. But it's like that a man, dead bird. <clears throat> Look at a dead bird. Like he goes, he talks to Rogan and he goes, 
I had owl for Thanksgiving, and Joe's like, I don't think you're allowed to eat owl. And he goes, then maybe I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he is, uh, he just is, a, he's an interesting individual and he kills it. And then I'll see ones of me and I just skip immediately. I go, I don't know what, I want to know what I said. Yeah. Oh, fucking, especially the one of me and fucking DeStefano crying about having kids. <laughs> Does that I, would come back to haunt you. Oh my oh. God, Did you just show back up? <laughs> That's what the internet knows. He goes, remember when you did this two years ago, idiot? And you go, <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. It's, and people use that as a meme. Like, they'll use, like, me and him, they'll cut out anything meaningful. Just going, it gets worse, man. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck. They just got uh, Rogan and Jelly Roll crying at the fat Hawaiian and American Idol singer. <laughs> what? And they just cried. They just watch it and cry together. How crazy is it Jelly Roll's as big as he is? Who's Jelly Roll? Oh. He's a country star. Oh, yeah. country star. And he was like a comedy fan. Oh. Yeah, he was a big comedy fan. He'd be I, like, legitimately, I bet Norton thought it was a black comic for two seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Someone is doing goes, six shows at the improv. Goes, Are they bringing <laughs> Def Jam back? <laughs> Wait, do you know who's on this tour? Bruce Oh, Bruce Bruce, 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 Bruce Rules. Isn't that fucking is crazy? He? Yeah. Isn't what gigs? Crazy? Uh, I think on. The Gorge Run, the last four. Bruce Bruce is the guy you would see. Like, you'd be in an improv and you'd have, like, a half-sold Saturday Late Show. Yeah. But he's the one coming up next week where they added a Tuesday yeah, show. Yeah, that's oh. what we were like talking about earlier yet. about apologizing to waitresses when you didn't sell tickets. Yeah. But that would always be the thing where you look at the calendar and you go, hey, look who's coming, though. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to be a Late Show Thursday. You'll make it back on that, all right? Is there anything By worse way, than a... They are, like, we are going to make it back, but it's actually just two shows on a Sunday, but they <laughs> sold them out months ago. <laughs> Bruce Bruce and I were, I was at the improv with him, and he had the largest diamond earrings, the largest diamonds in his ears that were hanging, like hanging like the way, like, you know when a woman gets older and her earring holes yeah. get longer and she just, and earrings hang? And I was staring, he had so much jewelry on. I was like, motherfucker. That's big-ass jewelry. Yeah, I love yeah. Bruce Bruce. Yeah, I he's think, funny. I think yeah, he's so great. Funny. He was the first guy that I ever saw come with security with an, an obvious gun. Yeah. Right? Because, like, they would pay him in cash at the end of the week in the oh. clubs. So the, <laughs> they, would, they would have someone. Now everybody. Those but yeah. Cat Williams, he's giving me a duffel bag of yeah. $350,000. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I do, too, sort yeah. of. Yeah. Do, uh, they well, think it's, they think it's tax-free. Yeah. They think they're I getting street cash. Quench your bells, bitch. <laughs> it's, still, it's, getting... it's still getting accounted for. Yeah, it's like, do you think the what venue is not declaring us? No, they, yeah. think they're, they think they're running away with a street, like a drug deal. Yeah. Yeah. I need you to put it in the mailbox outside the arena, baby, and then I'll pick it up. <laughs> Wait, can I tell you what drives me nuts? People used to make fun of Eddie Griffin all the time. For the Air he... Force One? Sneakers. Yeah, but it's in his rider. He's paying for them. He's oh, paying yeah, for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Really? Like that, yes, he pays for them. Sure. That he just wants everything. new shoes. He just doesn't want to carry them. Yeah, he doesn't want to travel yeah, fucking a pair of Air Force Ones. They're big yeah. and clumsy. Yeah. He's paying for them all the time. But you're right. I'm so stupid. I would have thought that the venue is paying for them. That's Not what really. I thought. It's oh, coming out of the gross, up. though. It's coming out off the top, it's which coming is off his the top. money. Yeah. It's, like, right. it's like for a, sure. hundred percent. Yes, a hundred Listen, as someone who's paying for it. Everything, yeah, this tent, well, then, that thank fucking, yeah. Thank you very much. Well, if you guys yes. want Air Force One, let me know. Like, which camera's me? <laughs> Eddie Griffin, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've told that story <laughs> with like a fuck that guy, right? Seven billion times <laughs> over. And I didn't realize you were paying oh. for those sneakers, and you're right, and I want sneakers every show I do now. Hi, Eddie Griffin, Dan Soder, formerly of the Bonfire myself. I want to apologize as well, because I, like Jay, led with that story as an example of being a dickhead. And we were both wrong. Wait, 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 wait. And we both learned. Hey, wait, can, can I get a camera? Hey, Eddie, I know you just found out that you're paying for those sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. I didn't be the one to tell you there's no Santa Claus. <laughs> I bet that's true as shit. We're going to go like this. Fuck these white boys. What the fuck did you say? <laughs> Wait, that, can I do mine? Yeah, can I do mine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that me? Eddie, I appreciate the fact that you got a fresh pair Air Force <laughs> ones every time. Because I felt very embarrassed. Our first show at um, Forest Hills in yeah. Queens, I, I wore dirty Air Force ones because I thought it was going to rain. Yeah. So I felt ashamed to be on stage in New York City. If you would have had that rider. Yeah. I should have had him in my rider. Do I have a rider? Fresh kicks waiting here for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah everyone has a rider. Yeah, I need yeah. a rider. Where's my rider? Everyone's got a rider. My rider's pretty fucking light. And then yeah. you get started. One of the things that drives me nuts is somehow it made it on my rider that I need Rogaine every show. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. There was a point where I had 150 cans of Rogaine because they just bought it every show, and I was like, whoa, 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 yeah. I'm buying this Rogaine. I, I also buy my own Rogaine. I don't need yeah. Rogaine. I don't have the, a 900 heads. And so, yeah, I get, I get, I'm a little penny pincher to myself when it comes to stuff. Whereas, I like, like, uh, I won't say it. Like, I can't say it. <laughs> Wait, is it open? Can we eat after this? Yeah. You can eat whenever. Oh, okay. uh, you may want to eat before. I don't know what time they close, but they're pretty cool. This is different than our normal. We travel with catering, but this is different. Yeah. This is really good. Barbecue. This morning, I said I feel good. My stomach isn't pushing out. I don't feel sick. I'm going to eat very lightly. I had a fish taco, a short rib taco, a chicken taco, half of each, and I went, I'm good. I said, I'm not going to eat again, and I went over, and, and I someone goes, have you seen the key lime pie popsicles and i went what jim they had a piece of corner piece of key lime pie shoved on a stick drizzled in chocolate that was frozen i took it into a bathroom and ate it by myself i took it was it the first the thing you yeah. said to me when i saw you this oh morning oh my god you shame ate it I woke, <laughs> that's how i woke up isla i go isla they got key, and isla goes bring one stuck in my bunk I go, I'm not bringing one into your bunk. And then she came out, and for breakfast, she had a Pop-Tart and a key lime pie fucking, and a, some chips. Oh, God, it's so good. That it's sounds, so good. Yeah. They got pajamas right. waiting for us. I saw that. Clothing pajamas? The, yeah. You missed the ice bath yesterday. Bert, I think explain. Uh, you seem confused when he asked clothing pajamas, but just saying, like, they got pajamas for us and points of catering. <laughs> yeah. Is that, yeah. that was the weird thing. Yeah, Jim has, yeah. Jim's reaction was right. Yeah, because you, we were talking about food and popsicles. And they, I thought pajamas <laughs> yeah. was like some other kind of food. <laughs> pajamas. Yeah, pajamas is a, Jim. We're going to get the app. Yeah. We're doing a jammy jam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty fucking nice get in there. The food's great. And they have a, they have a cold brew f uh, fountain. They've got a, a cappuccino thing. Mm -hmm. This place is pretty cool. It, I love the smell of New Hampshire. Do you smell it differently? No, I, I, the, the, the water in my hotel smells weird. Really? It's got like that fucking weird fart sulfur water smell. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's <laughs> that's so shit in it. <laughs> yeah, but it's like the sulfur smell. Okay, then do you notice a different smell when you go to Florida? Like, does Florida feel, like, this smells different than Florida where I grew up. The only place yes, I've ever absolutely. felt that is where I went to like, in like a South Dakota or something, and you walk outside, and you're like, it's different for sure. Iceland, yeah. I noticed the air being clean. That's the only place I've ever said, like, wow, this smells different than I'm used to, probably Iceland. Yeah. yeah. New York's got a fucking smell. Yeah. Like when you're in New York, you're like, okay, this smells like, this smells like trafficked. Like it smells like a lot of shit I can't put my finger on. And then you'll, you'll smell the nuts. And then that's the only, like, that's my one thing in New York is when you smell like that, the weather turns and you start smelling the nuts getting cooked. It smells like oh. generational curses. That's what God. Talking. It stinks because there's like that weird curb smell. Of the of the garbage that like dries in the fucking curb, yeah. that stink, and then there's something nice like a pretzel or nuts that will overwhelm it. And then you walk a block and there'll be the fucking garbage smell again. It's back and forth. And then a fucking bum. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. Called uh, uh, find that smell, but you did it a game show, and then they took smells from certain cities and pumped it in. And That's then what Ari should do. Yeah, or because of his nose. Oh my God, he's got perfect palate. Whatever that means for nostrils. <laughs> Take Whatever perfect palate enjoy. is for smells. <laughs> Have you seen this venue yet? Uh, yeah, I came earlier, and I went up. And I looked at the stage, Fucking and I, it's really nice. Yeah, it's gonna be fun as fuck. I hope so. I hope tomorrow fills out. We still have some tickets for tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, we sold this one out so quick. We're like, add another one, and then. But a lot of people don't work on Monday. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's Juneteenth. Father's Day. Oh, oh, wait. Father's Day is tomorrow. Juneteenth yeah, is Monday. Monday. People White people take off Juneteenth? Yes. It's a Thank national you, holiday. Yeah. Oh, it's a national holiday? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Saifa. Yeah. I know you're not black, but you're the closest thing we have here. I am 100% the closest thing. Thank you. In the, in the 50 mile radius. Wait, are you are you Puerto Rican enough that you can say the N word? Yes. Well, oh, that's nice. not a that's a New York thing. It's a New York thing. Yeah. Because I remember, I remember watching Fat Joe saying it on like yeah. the Breakfast Club or something. Yeah. And I was like, I say it every day, all day. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a joke. I have a joke where I go, I don't even realize I'm saying it because in New York, it's not like when you go to California and, and Mexicans are divided from blacks. In New York, yeah. we're all the same. Plus, if you want to start getting deep, we're Caribbean, so that we come from the African diaspora, all that shit. Oh, but I have a joke. Again. I know. I, I'm not getting deep. <laughs> All of his friends are black too. They used to play soccer with people's heads. <laughs> but I'm saying, but I'm, I'm, I'm like, yo, that N word said the N word. 
when I say yeah. the N-word. I'm not going to say yeah. it now because I don't want to be canceled. Fuck but, you, would you shut <laughs> up? The, uh, yeah, I say it every day, all day. I fucking... Are <laughs> you Puerto Rican enough? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, because it's... I remember, I, I, I was like, that is a weird, like... Because, like, like Nori's, the, Nori's Puerto Rican, right? Yeah, but he's half black. Okay. Like, officially half black. I... <laughs> I say it in a way where if I'm out of town and there's black people around, they don't question me that, why am I saying it? Yeah. Because it is so natural of my New York hip hop vernacular. So I need to just practice more. <laughs> just get like, yeah. get, get in a dark room and just start saying it. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you say it three times, you never know who What could Dan do to be able to say it more though? If you had to give advice, if you would, <laughs> how how okay? Can Emma, could Eminem say it? No, he doesn't touch racial stuff. No, no. he doesn't. He ever he touches can't. racial no. stuff. No, they got him years and years ago. Yeah, a long time ago. Like him and Kid Rock, it went away. Kid Rock had said it too, but now it's to the point where like I think, you can't allegedly. even say it if you're talking about someone who said it, which is right. ridiculous. Yeah, which is ridiculous. But no, Eminem can't say it. I did. Uh, I did. Uh, it was one of the it was one of the funniest things in the fucking world. It was really natural and fun, but like Bobby had asked me if I had ever said the C H word. I just, I'm being, ah. and I said no. I said, well, not really. I said I don't think so. But that, I didn't really grow up with any Asian people in Florida, oh, yeah. and it wasn't no, like, I was like what's the C H word? Yeah, 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 yeah I know. Yeah. I wish, yeah. <laughs> and then he goes, have you ever have you ever sent it in a text? Oh no, I told him that one of the ways to find out how clean you are is go to your text messages, type in like the N word or the yeah. CH word yep. and see if it's ever been texted to you. Yeah. See how many lives you could ruin if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, right? <laughs> and so, I, and so I, I go, I'm clean on that one, I'm sure. And I typed it in and it showed up. And I went, Under oh, yours? on mine. Oh, and then Bobby goes, wait, what is it? And it's our two friends who are Asian. And it was so funny. I made him take it out of his podcast because it was so funny because it was real. I was discovering it at the real moment. And I went, I went, hold on. Oh shit, I have typed it. And he goes, Are you serious? Now everyone in that room's Asian. And I'm like, Yeah, I guess. And I go, let me read it. And it was me texting to our two Asian friends. I'm about to reset my phone the factory settings. <laughs> <laughs> and it said Jay goes, I don't have a history of this phone. This phone is brand new. Yo. Yo. It's, and it what? said, uh, it said, Hey, so I, I, it in I wrote, it. who's up to party tonight? And one group of friends said, We are. And then our Asian friends said, count in two chunks, 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 chunks. And they had misspelled it. Every time times. they And then finally it. the last one was the right word. And we all laughed hysterically, but I said the word. And then I got, and then you get nervous. You're like, I don't want to fucking deal with someone yeah. isolating that audio and then slowing it down. So it looks like you're, you're screaming it out of a car window. Yeah. yeah. So, so I was like, whatever. Joe Coy on the battlefield, dude. Yeah. And so. I said it once in a meeting. <laughs> in a By meeting? accident. <laughs> There was a woman who used this. Is why I don't have a better about career. Armor? I, literally, no. The woman's name was Grace. Right. Wu. She was the chest plate has. She, I was she talking about Vietnamese. Vietnamese. I didn't know they were called something else. Her name was Grace Wu. She was in charge of development at NBC. Wait, I know Grace Wu. Right. Wait, you said, it said to Grace that, Wu? Well, let me tell you what I said. This is what I said. This is why I don't have a better career. You want to hear it? I'll tell you the whole story. Because oh. I have a very Larry David without the money or oh, that's the talent great. and. I'm sitting with her, my manager, and they're like, we're talking about what we're going to do and our development deal and all this other stuff. And she said, what about you? Like, what are your flaws? And I'm like, this is, I'm single. I'm like, I don't know how to flirt. Like, I'm the worst. That I'm just, I go, I guess you would say that's the chink in my armor. Oh, yeah. And then I, I heard myself say it. And then it clicked into me what I said. But I didn't say it that way. But no, they don't. Then, that, that term isn't but that there's I an Asian person in armor. No, that's no, a no, common no. term. I know, no, but like it means it, but it means then I made it right. I yeah. know, but yeah. I said it, and then I paused <laughs> enough to make it seem like I was saying, <laughs> and I kind of. Uh. And, and then so I you, just got your up pause and left. gave it the meaning. Yeah. You like pause I, and I, like, yeah. I screwed myself up. And then I just got you up go, and no, left. Not the, I just not walked the out. Kind. I couldn't even come back. You probably, yeah, you shouldn't have said, don't make me repeat that. <laughs> that would, that would be only funnier if you go, you know what that term means, right, Grace? <laughs> you know when you go home and you have the sneaky suspicion someone snuck into your armor <laughs> and you're like, is someone in my armor? Yeah. And you're like, oh, fuck, and it's the yeah. delivery guy yeah. from earlier. And then, and then I just left. And that was the hard. I realized and I 
like, uh, and my manager's like, why did you do that? I'm like, because I know she. Because I wanted her to know that I knew. <laughs> I, I, I just didn't have any words to come back. It's a real expression that has nothing to do with a national. But it's almost like was that was that in your head? Like when like the guy on the Oakland A's. Uh, Oh, yeah, uh, I saw announcer. that. Because he was, we had a he, lovely day in the city. We went to the, and then the said, Negro League uh, Museum yeah. or the Negro yeah. League Museum. And he, he said, but really, how you shouldn't say it. it was, and it was I so know, perfectly was, clear. They actually fired him. Um, 2005. I just, I just, I don't know. I just, I realized what I said. And it just, I felt like an idiot. And I just didn't even know what to say. And oh, that feeling, I just, there needs to be a word for that feeling when you do something like that. And then you go to your hotel room and your phone doesn't ring for eight hours. And you're just going, motherfucker, I fucked up. Huge. Yeah. And when you're a person like us who always has words. Yeah. We have a mastery of words. And I just literally, there was not another word for me to say. And I just got up and yeah, left. And I left it in different, the different, though. I know that, but. It means something like different. Was, but it was, was in the air. School. We don't have a flux it capacitor for me to go back. But I went to school for airplane mechanics because I'm Puerto Rican, but special level. And we used to say. Shut. That to, is a lie. Right. This is up. I did. I swear and to God. This is fiction. I swear to God. In Long Island, I, first of all, my Varsity. ninth grade, I went to aviation high school to be an air, airplane mechanic. The really? first flying yeah. DJ. <laughs> and we used to have Soul to... Soul plane. We used to have to... <laughs> is that a documentary? <laughs> <laughs> That's the that's the Cypher Sounds bio movie where he goes, but how am I gonna put hip hop in the sky? <laughs> you ever hear hip hop uh, at thirty thousand feet? <laughs> but we used to say we had to retard the metal. <laughs> we had to retard yeah. the metal sure. because it means you 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 heat it up. And retard then metal it. sounds so awesome. But that's yeah, what like, it is. I'm talking about the devil. It's just slowing down. <laughs> I'm talking about the devil. Come on, look at with the devil. He doesn't, he doesn't bed. I'm not going to bed. I'm not going. <laughs> the skincare world is heavily female driven and has long been the wild, wild west for men. Whether men can't find the right brand or simply lack the knowledge and understanding of it, skincare is something that requires attention. Dude, I. My under eyes suck. They're puffy. They're brown. I notice it. I don't know if you notice it. You know who I was sitting with the other day? It was Rob Lowe. His under eyes are perfect. Caldera creates high-performance men's skincare products, and the regimen leads off their product lineup. A twice-a-day routine to transform your skin. Inside the regimen, you're going to find a bundle, the dream team. You got the clean slate, the base layer, and the good. They even have this under eye serum. Uh, called the Icon. It addresses the three most common skin concerns around the eyes. Fine lines, got them. Dark circles, got them. And puffiness. I'm telling you, there's a Two Bears episode coming out very recently where I put on the uh, the Icon, and I'm telling you, you can tell the difference. Get 20% off with your with our code, BERT, at calderalab.com. That's 20% off at calderalab.com by using the code BERT. Take your health to the next level in skincare with Caldera Lab. Buying tickets to your favorite event should not be stressful. Game time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, comedy, music, theater near you with killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guaranteed. You can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped up for the fun you'll have. That's the best part is when you text your friends and go, yo, who wants to go see widespread panic or Taylor, to Taylor Swift's coming out here. Did you know that? Taylor Swift's coming out here. I want I want to go so bad. So is Morgan Whalen. Morgan Whalen's more like a me and Leanne thing. Get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Buy the ticket in a matter of seconds. Two taps and you're set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone so you don't have to worry about digging through your email at the gate going like, I know I'll find it. Give me a second. Snag tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use the code BERTCAST for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code BERTCAST for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. When I was yeah, growing yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm sure a lot of you guys, this, we played a game in our neighborhood called Smear the Queer, yeah. where they were like, oh, we oh, just, nice. here's football. Yeah. And then we ended up just kissing and holding yeah. each other. <laughs> Whoever had the ball was the queer. <laughs> yeah. The N word in phrases in the South. Oh, boy. That's, yeah. that's how you explain 
uh, it's, it's, it's used as a, a verb. Yeah. Yeah. Tell you, tell you, you have directions. Make yeah. a left at the- <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time we were having dinner. Leanne and I were having dinner. And Leanne grew up in the South, too, with these two people. And we were saying about how there were these, the, 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 the phrase ding dong and ditch isn't used in the South. It was called something else. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and so we were explaining that to them, and they were like, that's not real. And I go, no, it's real. And I said, it's got to have a website, because there's got to be a website that has a list of them. And I, I pulled up a website. I go, oh, here it is. This is it. Watch this. And I start reading them off, and they're like, whoa. Like, when you spend your money ca- uh, callously, N-word rich. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. And then it started being like, uh, when one sleeps with your sister, and you're like, huh? And I was on the KKK's website, and I'm just reading... That, like and everyone's like, what fucking website are you on? I was like, uh, Stormfront or something. Oh shit! And I was on the fuck. I was like, oh god. But yeah, there's a guy that updates that. There's a guy yeah. that goes, oh, you know what? I need to do and and kissing. Yeah. I didn't. I need to put that up there. It's like a fox worthy yeah. guy. Like yeah. you might be. <laughs> All right, good pivot. <laughs> now we're all going to have that word in our head while we're on stage tonight. Well, oh, well, hear Rogan, Rogan had a friend one. who had to quit Dude, doing comedy. I'll do it. Because he kept saying, all he went do, would do when he got on stage would go, don't say the N-word, don't say the N-word, don't say the N-word. That's what all his brain would do. And I and he told me that That's story. That's a crazy thing to have to keep in your head yeah. all the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, gotta, yeah. Got it. One, he goes, once a day, I got to let it out. Yeah. I got to go scream it into a pillow. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my N-word <laughs> smash <Yeah>. room. <laughs> He uh, and he told me that story, and I was hosting something for Travel Channel, and he, I think we were on the phone, or maybe he told me on his podcast. And I was listening to it, and then I called him right before I went on, and I was like, "Hey, is that a real story?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, man, that guy fucking, he really got in his head. He just all he'd think was, don't say damn word, don't say damn word.'" And then they were like, okay. "Hey, you're up in five. and I was like, "Okay," and I was like, "I was like, would he say it?" No, no, he would, but he would, it would, it's like a case of the yips. You know what the yips are? No, in sports, no, in sports. There's like great athletes who all of a sudden can't throw the ball to first. Like Chuck Knobloch when he kept throwing the ball into the yeah yeah, yeah that's the yips. And so, the Sixers draft, every, yeah. And so, uh, but he had to quit comedy because he would get on stage and he'd have to start having panic attacks. It's like what Kyle Cease. You remember Kyle Cease used to think, "What if I pass out right now? What if I pass out right now?" And then he had to go to like severe therapy. He's like a motivational speaker now, right? I think so. Yeah, I went through that in the early 2000s. I had a bucket. I, I was doing like uh, a bunch of gigs and I thought I was going to pass out or vomit. So I had Kenny put a bucket by the side of the stage in case I was threw up. But it was it was severe panic attacks. I was just I would stand there and have to hold on to a stool because I'm like, I'm going to collapse. I'm going to pass out on stage. Jeez. And I finally just said to myself, shut the fuck up, you fucking pussy. Just fall. And then it's, it went away. Like, yeah, like, you have to the, you have to just kind of just talk to yourself like that. And it goes away. The best the best thing on stage is when you have absolutely no voice in your head and you're just flowing and having fun and creating i feel like i feel like like it was like watching a tell last night where he just i was i love when you're there and then fucking the worst is what like last night for me my ex. having to watch the clock <laughs> to know yeah. that we have a curfew and know that i have to do this and i have to bring people on stage that's the worst for me the worst and then especially when you're in your head you're like because last night i wanted them to get a picture i was like we're getting pictures in front of them it kind of sucks for them i want them to get a picture of us and post it on social media so in my head i'm like all right I need to get everyone up here. I want to make sure that we all face them. Make sure I explain that to everyone. And I'm like, as I'm telling the machine story, and I'm looking at the clock going, I got to tell the machine story in nine fucking minutes. What parts am I taking out? Like, that's the fucking, I wow. hate that. You're telling it as you're up against the clock at the end? Um, dude, I had I told the machine story in, in Forest Hills. We had a hard out at 10. Okay, it was like, like, it was like but this, level, <clears throat> this level of show, it's all the whole time I'm on stage here. The second voice is doing like, how much? Like, what should I go to? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. I love having a clock in front of me. There's nothing. Yeah. Oh, better. The no, I, so, I like that. I prefer that. I prefer over. that. Too. I can't believe there's how many comedy clubs. Don't have that. Still don't every have club that. should Freddie have that. Freddie DeMarco used to have that. Freddie DeMarco was a guy in uh, Columbia, Missouri, and if you went over, he would get on the back mic and go. Take a picture of this room because you're never gonna fucking see it again. <laughs> and Jesus. Just shut it off. Yeah. Timmy Masada, the reason I never worked the Laugh Factory is he said, uh, I, got, I went there, I did a fucking seven minute set for ICM, got a deal, came back to see if I could do, and like I was the only one that got a deal, I guess none of his clients got deals. And then I said, came back to see and he goes, no, you run the light, you run the light. And I went, I did a seven minute set. I definitely, I did a showcase. I definitely didn't run the light. And, so, and, I, and then I realized I didn't know where the light was. <laughs> 
as he said that, and I was like, all right, never mind. I just won't work on the song. <laughs> My bad. You're right. Maybe you're right. Maybe I did run the light. Were we supposed to do five? <laughs> but we were talking last night backstage when you did go through all that. What would the fee have been? Is it like, is that too much to ask? Like, what's the fine? Are what's, a, like- what's a typical fine, Nick, for like, like uh, going over curfew? Oh, it's a lot. Yeah. I mean, like it, thousands. It, it, 25 like or so. Is it per minute or, or per quarter, per quarter hour? There's one we had per minute. Yeah. I remember that one. And then you go, you just get off at 10.55. Like, you get off five minutes yeah. before. Wow. But, yeah, we, but my first thing I do, and there's, uh, there's, it's hardcore like that in some theaters where they're like, yo, you have to, you have a hard off at 10 o'clock. And then the first thing you do is you get off and then you go right up to the stage manager or the person that runs the theater and you're like, hey, how was tonight? And they're like, great, awesome show. And you're like, Thank God. Yeah. Yeah. So the last thing you want to do is fucking do one joke for twenty five thousand dollars. <laughs> do we have a curfew tonight? Yeah. I don't. I don't know if it's hard or soft. Okay. Oh yeah, they'll That's cut the sound. For us, they were gonna yeah. shut the electricity off. Do they give you a warning? Is there like a you can go over nope. by ten? No and... At on the I saw it happened to corn when I was on tour with them. Really? On the word on the part of the word night in good night. Looked in the mid store and he was just like looked at his microphone like oh, I'd much rather them do that than find me. Just yeah. cut the fucking yeah. sound off and I'd be yeah, like, yeah. "Fuck it, a rocket acapella, fuck a <laughs> Papa Doc." <fuck> it. <laughs> they did that to me on Last Comic Standing too. I think it would have changed my career. Is uh, they cut the mic at three minutes? They did. Yeah, and they cut the mic on my last joke, and I just let them. And I was gonna and Eminem had just got, Eight Mile just come out, and I was gonna <laughs> do that. Fuck it. A rocket a cappella. Fuck a papa doc. Fuck a clock. Fuck a. One box, I'm a two real box. piece of shit if you hate me. <laughs> like, I thought I knew the whole thing. I should have done it. Who are you up against that year? Gary Goldman, Pablo Francisco, Will Durst, Wait, Tammy Gary. Pescatelli, oh, uh, yeah. Gar- uh, Bonnie McFarland. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Kathleen Madigan, Gary Goldman. Yeah. Uh, Todd. John Heffron. Todd. Uh, Todd. Uh, Bridges. Yeah, Todd Bridges. Uh, no, isn't that crazy? That I can Todd remember Glass. the, I can what remember the was cast. That? We had of that was two. our cast. That was Todd Todd Glass, Corey Holcomb. The we were. Was April? It was me. On that? No, no, our season was me, Kathleen, John Heffron, Alonzo Bowden, Todd Glass, Alonzo, yeah, Bonnie, Aunt. Uh, no, Aunt was on yours. He was on mine. We oh yeah, he was. He we was, lived right, in that right, house right, yeah. from Morris Day in the time. Uh, that porn house. You we didn't lived do a there show for, for a long days. time with Ant. <laughs> Tell uh, somebody else that. They tried to get me yeah, and Ant to that fight guy. that entire time. Jim got the best out on on Last Comic Standing too. The best thing that could ever happen on national television. The the showrunner. You left. No, he yeah. just we just went. Jim, we can't fix your contract. Apparently, you're too big for Last Comic Standing. Yeah. Do you remember that? No, I, I remember. I, I had a contract with MTV to do Spring Break. Um, I had two pilots for spring break. They were both doing uh, horrible. Yeah. But then I was going to Cancun to shoot a hey, pilot. Hey, this is Jim Nord. I'm here. What? Hey, girl in the band. You're Paulie Shore. <laughs> get banned out. Dude, Paulie Shore did my, he, he hey, actually buddy. helped me and did my pilot. <laughs> oh, dude, that's, so, that's so funny. Hey, buddy. It's me, Jim Nord. <laughs> I'm the weasel, the weasel. <laughs> but Jim wearing macho man like headbands and stuff. I did it was it was a, it was a, it was 2003 I think. It was a spring break. It was called Stupid Bets and I couldn't do the last comic. The house would have conflicted with the time. So MTV gave me another pilot. They gave me two pilots to make up for the fact that I couldn't do that. I remember we were sitting downstairs at one of those bars playing like poker or whatever and you were like, uh, "Yeah, I think I'm leaving tomorrow." And I'm like, "But we have more auditions tomorrow and you're like yeah i can't and then and then you just took off like you didn't even say goodbye to anybody in the morning and they and then they tried to tell it i knew what, what was a grudge hold well no no but i knew what you was going on but i wasn't shit. allowed well they made it like he was leaving they made it like he wanted to leave without so i should have known it was a fake show then like yeah like you were like oh i'm above this you no know yeah i, mean? I was yeah. furious that I, I couldn't the get the contract thing. changed and I wasn't allowed to say anything. Like, Tammy yeah. Pescatelli, fuck right off. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. the chink in my armor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a show to do. Uh, where I guess my wife's giving me the wrap it up sign. So uh, everyone can get ready. I know I have to take a shower, but I don't go on until like fucking 10. So uh, I can't wait. Thanks for being here, Jim. Oh, thanks for having me. This is great. Yeah, this is going to be fun. This is We have two shows here tonight and tomorrow. And yes. then 
so everyone's killing it. It's so fucking fun. This is a this is like this is like my someone said this to me the other day, and I, it's a little sad, but I, I but I, I actually am cool with the, how sad it is. Uh, someone goes, Maureen Taryn said, yeah. uh, "Can you believe that you did all of this? Can you believe that?" And I was like, "Yeah." She goes, "What is that in you?" And I go, Maureen, if I didn't do this. I wouldn't be invited to this. Like, it, I, in order for me to get one of these, I had to make it. Like, I wasn't gonna, no one was gonna like make one of these and go, we should call Bert. <laughs> you know, like it never happened for Oddball or anything. And so I fucking love this. Yeah. I love it. I'll, I'll tell you, cause I know it matters to you so much because it would me too at a tell, like to, off to the side said to me, he's like, how amazing this is. Like he's, yeah. he's super impressed by it too, which I know is like, like someone you were so happy to have on oh, this thing. Dude. So yeah. He was, other than my wife, freaking him out last night. By crying, my, Leanne pulled him aside and cried to him. Yeah. And Dave, you could watch Dave back up, like, yeah. physically. Yeah. That's not good for okay. me. Okay, okay. Okay, he goes, uh, what did he say? Uh, I'll be upstairs. Oh, we can do this, later. Yeah. I'll be doing this yeah. later. I cried when you had him singing. I couldn't, I just, the whole thing was bizarre. The moment you walk out, they, they go crazy. The moment well, the you moment say anyone machine, walks out, it's fun. No. chicks. Oh, look at this fucking You have guy. a mascot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you have, there's a mascot as you. He said, shh. Yeah. That and has a mouth, butthole for a mouth. His mouth looks but. like a fucking sex doll. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but, but Bert, i just tell you real quick. When I met you on the Impractical Jokers cruise, you said something that touched me. You also touched me. But you said something that touched me. When you got off, when you were doing your show, you thanked the Jokers for sharing their audience with you. Yeah, and yeah. that was a major moment to me the way it sounded, like, oh, share your audience. And that's how I feel about being on this. So I just want to say thank you oh, no, of for having me, man, because this well, you, shit is fucking awesome. You're the, fucking awesome, The Cypher. whites really love are. me. The whites yeah. are loving you. The whites. <laughs> the whites. <laughs> man, the whites freaked out when Shane Gillis got on stage last night. Oh, that was. He was Big a surprise pop. guest. Pennsylvania and those whites, whites yeah. were like, he brought out trash like us. <laughs> <laughs> man, they spoke in code. The, yeah. and, the, and like they were barking to each other. Yeah, for it was a hill people chatter. <laughs> Shane's whole set was a dog whistle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, it's like, the first the time I've this? ever felt Just respected. Twin speak? At least right. my face. We got to get a cipher up on stage. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks, Bert. Let's have a great show and then get drunk oh, tonight. Yes, Bye. Bert. 